Hello, everyone, and welcome. We are very pleased to uh, share with you Women in Leadership in the Industry, a wonderful panel, and it's curated by WIH. So WIH, if you had heard yesterday uh, with Keith, on our panel, WIH stands for Women in Hotels. We are a global not-for-profit organization and best-in-class community where all women cross-segment across the hospitality industry are welcome to join. And we believe that together we are stronger. We believe in collaboration with all colleagues and that together we can raise the game and create an industry that is more diverse and inclusive. So without further ado, I am thrilled to present to you three formidable and inspiring women. Um, so let me start off and let me give you their, their not full, but their um, bio so that you truly understand their experience. So Dr. Bashara Ahmadjad, as a professor of law at Kuwait University, Dr. Bashar Ahmadjad is a strong believer in constitutional rights and works to inspire the next generation of lawmakers and empower women in the Middle East. She is interested in legal economic policy making and solutions to diversifying the economy away from oil. Dr. Bashar holds a doctorate in contract law and three LLMs in contract law, public law, oil contract, and business law. And as I would term her, she is the Kuwaiti RBG. Hala Matar Chufani. Hala Matar Chufani is a president for HVS, Middle East, Africa, and South Asia. She has advised on more than 3,500 hospitality mixed use projects in the last 17 years across Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and Asia. In addition to being a board member of HVS Global, Hala sits on the boards of Harvard Business School Club, of the GCC, AHIC, and was born in Beirut, lived and worked in several cities across Europe, Asia, and the Middle East, and is a mother of three. Lynn Schumann. Lynn Schumann is an experienced journalist and media professional. Before joining LinkedIn, she worked for seven years at Al Arabia News Channel as a business news anchor and reporter. During her work there, Lynn covered business stories and interviewed top business leaders and decision makers across the Middle East and North Africa, and also brings with her experience in economic policy and development, having previously worked at the World Bank office in Beirut. Lynn obtained her degree in economics from the American University of Beirut. So please join me in welcoming our three incredible panelists. Dr. Bashar, Hala, Lynn, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. So what I thought, Dr. Bashar, do you wish to do the honor and set the stage for our audience uh, in regards to regional development and what opportunities and breakthroughs have occurred? Well, thank you very much, Lisa, for this wonderful uh, introduction, and thank you for having me here today. Um, well, first of all, I'm, I'm very pleased and honored to be with this uh, wonderful um, uh, panel uh, to discuss um, a case which is very dear to my heart. Um, all of you, um, as you know, that the United Nations Sustainable uh, development goal, if I'm speaking very general, uh, the United Nations Sustainable Goal number five, um, emphasize on gender equality and empowerment, uh, and empowerment for women and girls. And um, also we have the United Nations World Tourism Organization, which says that the female entrepreneurs, particularly in the tourism industry, is going more than 50%. We have also now policies and, 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 and um, changes that's happening in the Middle East, and I'm giving um, Saudi Arabia as an example. Uh, Saudi Arabia pillars, to in, uh, 2030 pillars, is to increase female participants in the labor market. And um, personally, I saw that when I, when I visited Saudi uh, recently uh, in the Ministry of Tourism, the amount of uh, women empowerment and, and, and females that I saw, they're leading the whole ministry and designing everything was just great to see and um, also just, just to give some figures and facts uh, McKinsey Global Institutes uh, reported that 12, uh, 12 uh, trillion could be added to the uh, global GDP by the 20 uh, 25 by achieving women equality so I think I mean uh, talking very general um, uh, 
it is very important case and it's very important and it's happening now in the Middle East so um, and, and we need to we are all part of it and we need to just carry on wonderful thank you for for setting the stage there and Lynn I believe you have some wonderful uh, statistics to give background to women representation yeah it, so, so when we talk about you know being culturally more aware now of the role that women are playing in their workforce in general um, there has been a lot of improvement of course uh, be it in the change of rhetoric right and the reorganization of the workflow um, across uh, the world and that is due to different things mainly evolution uh, and also you know several external factors several movements like the me too like different you know stories that we hear so more and more talk about women in the workforce more and more talk about equality but some sobering news or some sobering data uh, show us that we like women are still underrepresented i would uh, you know use some numbers from linkedin those numbers are from 2019 uh, and they concern you know uh, the workforce in europe Middle east and africa but they are not super fresh but they give us you know they highlight on one important truth maybe that should be you know the start one of the starting points of the strat is that we still are not equally represented in the labor force uh, uh in the workforce across sectors and hospitality is of course one of them the, the cultural awareness part is very important uh and women consider it super important. and by that we mean uh how much they put weight on colleagues and on companies supporting them. So the same study of LinkedIn from LinkedIn says that around 50% of the women who are surveyed uh, consider uh, the support, the cultural support that they have from their employer and from their, their colleague very important versus around 40% of their male counterparts. So here is you know, the critical uh, or the relevance um of 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 this this issue and of course we hear often i personally hear often whenever i share something about a woman like chat on women uh, uh, equality in the labor force um some would tell me aren't you guys talking about this too much um so those numbers are maybe you know the biggest arguments like it's not too much yet so i'm, I'm happy this conversation is, is going forward Yes. No, thank you for that. And Hala, do you wish to add what cultural experience and lessons um, have you learned in becoming a woman in, lead in leadership? And perhaps you give the audience a background of just your, your just how cross-cultural you are and your experience within the industry. Sure, Lisa, happy to do so. And I think, you know, with hearing what Dr. Bashir and Lean have shared with us, uh, the positive is that we're moving in the right direction. And this is where it ties back to what Lynn mentioned in terms of the culture. As you introduced me earlier on, I've been uh, traveling across the world for the last 22 years. So I have been in different situations and obviously in different cultures. And with that, there has been uh, opportunities, but challenges. I don't want to underestimate you know, the challenges and the muscles you built along the way. Mm -hmm. But I also want to say that it has been extremely rewarding. And you know, while I don't have the statistics, but the fact that the first time I participated in something similar, be it a conference in this part of the world, there were very few women there. And at the moment, there's plenty of them and very successful. And this is, I think I can't even hide my excitement. <laughs> I'm trying, the trying, but this is really very exciting to see that we are basically able to enter the workforce and to, to shine and to support other women. Speaking of the cultural differences, again, the way I have looked at it, not necessarily being a challenge, but really an opportunity to learn. And you know, the, this diversity just grows you as an individual, be it male or female. Uh, I, you know, I've traveled the world with certain perceptions, obviously, and we were brought up also in cultures to believe certain elements, which along the way, you also have to work on yourself to break those uh, misconceptions, I would say. So an element of it, also with uh, meeting those challenges is to really understand and staying true to yourself. I must say, I've always had a goal in terms of, I believe that I will succeed and I will just adapt and build a lot of muscles along the way. But, you know, I think what I'm trying to say is that 
from a cultural perspective, this is just one challenge. There are other challenges. But then if we look at what the society today, the government and the companies are doing to support women, it's probably we're, you know, it's much better for the newer generation and we should work stronger together to make sure that we're building not just the structure, which comes to policies. I totally get it. This is extremely important. But I'm talking more from the angle of the human and women confidence that I think is extremely important as well. Yes, no, very much so. And actually, whilst you're on the point, do you wish to also discuss uh, being a mother as well as a, a career woman? And how has that impacted? And what can you um, share with the audience in terms of, of lessons and, and perhaps uh, advice? Thank you, Lisa. You've opened an interesting <laughs> window because I like not always to appear in the in you know in a very business context basically to say that i am a mother of three and this is another full-time job and it does again require and i don't want to make it sound simple because i know people are tuning in and i'm i'm optimist by nature simply because i believe that challenges are turned into opportunity but i didn't want to compromise so i didn't want to compromise on being able to have a family equally i didn't want to compromise to pursuing my career. So let me start off by saying definitely the company I'm working for, but also the family that is behind me, really helped me succeed in being able to maintain this balance. So I don't want to discredit that because this is extremely important. And for all women out there, you need those backbones uh, you know, in place. But then as well, it is also about overcoming what many women out there feel the pressure of just perfecting every single aspect of our life of being of that guilt and i you know i don't want to spend too much time talking about that at the moment but as a mom i had to really work on overcoming the guilt feeling am i needed at home am i needed outside something told me they're going to be proud of me now they're much older and i know they are but there were times that i really had to think through when what is this fine line between making sure that i can attend to what they need and i also can deliver in in a professional capacity uh, but it is both rewarding extremely rewarding i wouldn't do anything differently along the way it hasn't been easy but today i feel definitely now that my daughter is 12 years old she's ready you know certain things that i needed back in the days that today I have been able also to role model. And then with the support of everything that is happening along the side, uh, this is great. I know Lynn is uh, is nodding there, so yeah. perhaps Lynn yeah, yeah, I, do, yeah, I just want to comment on this because, you know, sessions like these and uh, conversations and articles and, you know, women also in power, um, they're, they're giving the world um, some so something special, right? Because now uh, our role models, of course, they're, they're always personal, right? But now we have more opportunities to learn from role models that are, you know, maybe away or in another maybe generation or era, we were not able, we were not able to, you know, hear their stories. And what is really important here is the story like like Hala's stories, for instance, to be available for, for other women um, and to basically demonstrate two things about role models and about actually women who made it. So two things, one, proving the blueprint, right? So whatever you leave in the industry, so going in a certain position or, or uh, delivering a, uh, in a certain role and leaving it uh, 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 in a better shape. That's one, yes. the blueprint. And two, some, somehow sobering uh, up the, the ideal idea of balancing between personal and professional life. So we need to hear stories uh, about the huge compromise and the big, you know, discomfort or uncomfortable feeling that women have while they, you know, oscillate between, you know, periods in their lives where professional or their career is the priority and then at some point they kind of you know lower the beat so they can you know focus on their personal life etc so this kind of uh, real approach um is very important for all women to have and and that's also why having role models and stories out there uh, is very important to to inspire and to you know so we can so we can have a more concrete sense of what actually happens with women yes no and it's a very good because, possibly to that. Yes, Dr. Bashar. 
I, I find it really challenging, to be honest, um, as a Middle Eastern woman and in the field of law, I'm a professor of law, um, it is um, it is not easy, I must say, um, uh, it, 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 for many reasons, um, not only because um, uh, I'm from the Middle East or I work in the Middle East, but I studied abroad, I studied in England and I studied in France. Uh, it is very challenging because I find it sometimes uh, because um, you're, a, you're a woman, you have to do a little bit extra all the time just to prove the point. I find it this myself. I don't know about you ladies, but it's always uh, this little extra effort that I have to do to prove uh, that I am uh, serious. Otherwise, um, I could be in the fashion industry or something like that. That's that's the, the typical stereotype. But uh, you know, trying to 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 prove um, that I am a serious professor in the in the field of uh, law and uh, reform and economy, I find it to be honest, uh, not easy, challenging. Plus, uh, balancing, as um, Hala said, the personal life with the professional life, and be be nice all the time to everyone it's it's not it's not uh, it's not easy and we we get this stereotype by the way that we're always um, emotional anything you do it's um, because you're a lady that could be interpreted as an emotion emotional thing or emotional action straight away yeah uh, which is i don't like and i spoke in ted talk about it uh, a couple of months ago like uh, men and women can be both emotional so uh it's not only women that can be emotional but uh, i find women are giving uh, like tremendous and amazing examples uh, around us in the middle east and um, uh, around the world and i'm uh, i think now it's going uh, i mean yes as lynn said it's it's a, it's a very exhausted topic when we say women empowerment but we're getting there and we're achieving things if you know what I mean, it's not, uh, it is, we exhaust the topic, but we're moving forward, if you know what I mean. And we have to do that. Uh, we have to do this little extra. Yeah. yeah. But to that point, and then I'll come to you, Hala, on language, I'm, I'm conscious. Uh, but just to finish with Dr. Bashar, what do you think, therefore, needs to be done at the local level and more globally to make those changes? Uh, I think personally, um, uh, new, um, um, uh, professions need to be introduced to the Middle East and women culture. Let's say, for example, studying uh, tourism. Study, the, the, I mean, these professions are not um, not common. If you speak ten years ago or or even five years ago, people won't think of studying this kind of uh, um, thing in the college. They all want to study either medicine or law or marketing. But now. Uh, we need to we need to we need to diversify the economy and we need to introduce new um, uh, uh, fields and we need to 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 encourage entrepreneurship so we need to introduce that by creating um, uh, different policies by um, adopting uh, those policies and put them in the society by by giving a scholarship to certain and rare um, uh, professions uh, and try to to not to say push the girls but try to make the girls who are interested or who doesn't by the age of 18 I didn't I wasn't 100 percent sure what do I want to study personally so um, ju just just to give them more opportunities and widen their scope uh, to explore different things rather than staying in the typical um, uh, ball field. Yeah, no, and it's a very good point, and it comes back to the previous one on role models, is that those coming into the industry, you need to share with them all of the opportunities and the careers within the hospitality sector, because they're not aware, because there aren't role models per se for them. So the RISE program that that uh, Keith was discussing yesterday for general managers is extremely helpful. Other programs that can actually give you that uh, opportunity to those different career paths. Um, so to Hala, in terms of the previous discussion of language and taking criticism and the importance of language, you wish to touch on that. Right, and Lisa, if you allow me, I just want to go back to a point that Dr. Bashir mentioned, because this is extremely important. And I was there 10 years ago, perhaps, where we felt, especially, and I, I, I'd assume this goes across the globe, but let's take, let's start off with being Middle Eastern, that we always needed to do a bit more, especially in the finance world, where you really need to, you have a five-minute window to, to let them know 
that you know what you're talking about. And it's not just, and I think I'm talking the same language as Dr. Bashayir, but I don't think we should continue to do that. This is the message that I wanted, hopefully, to get through this. We don't have to prove anything to anyone. We're, when we're talking about equality, we should basically push forward with encouraging women not to feel challenged, but by themselves. And for me, this is extremely important because I know how challenging and how much it can consume your energy when you're always trying to fight a battle. So hopefully we're again moving in the right direction. And I think culturally, this is now supporting us too. So to your point, Lisa, with regards to uh, language, and again, uh, Dr. Bashayir mentioned emotions. So I want to bring in the word emotion, yeah. emotional intelligence because that's true. I think one of the first criticisms I've heard in the start of my career was, I didn't have enough gray hair, which is fine. I was young, now I do, but it had to do with being emotional. And you know, fast forward now, we talk about recruiting people with emotional intelligence. So that takes us back, okay, not perhaps not too much emotions, but it's extremely important also to acknowledge the emotional state, which then brings up the whole discussion around when we're looking to hire more women in the workplace, and while we have the laws in place, and government are obviously, sorry, companies are obviously pushing forward with that direction, I still feel we need to do two things. One, which is basically to do with the culture and the society, making sure that it's not just people within that company are actually understanding and supportive of women, but as a culture, do we support, as a society, do we support? and therefore we can bridge some of these issues. And then when it comes to companies, my personal view is that whether it's the training, whether it's the uh, you know, induction, whether it's how we promote, how we give feedback, I'm not necessarily saying, and I don't want anyone to, th to think this is favoritism, but we really need to design the way we hire, train, and grow women different to men. We respond differently, and I think there's no one that will disagree with the statement that we're different creatures. And I feel this is important because then the way we put across the message really help, helps support women with the confidence that they need to shine even more, and also helps them mature. You know, so it's always here again balancing between you know what we feel and then obviously understanding how we feel. And there is a big role in corporations not just to make policies and not just to do quotas. It is once somebody is on board, is the system really going to support the women to feel less scared or more confident or less criticized? And uh, and again, you know, that we, there has been criticism. I think one of the biggest criticism, and I really want to bring this one up, has been from women out there, very frankly to me. Women that cho chose not to work, mm -hmm. that they still don't get it. How did I travel so much and leave my kids? And I think of all criticism, that's the one that hurt me the most because for me, this is a judgmental criticism. This is not a constructive one. I totally respect if not everyone wants to become a career woman. That's a choice. So again, you know, to the point of mentoring and role model, and I'm so excited about women on hotels as, as a group because this is where people can turn to. I mean, they have mixed feelings. Yeah. There is somebody that will talk to them that will tell them, actually, you know what, 10 years ago, I felt this way, or perhaps even today I feel this way, and here's how I've dealt with it. So that, you know, there is somebody to turn to, and we're not alone in this, as we progress and as we catch up with, the, with the, yeah. you know, whatever is going to work out for us. But it, and it's also an important part, and Lynn, I'll come to you in one sec, in so, in so far that it's mentors for all levels, because you just alluded to that. It's not just those coming into the workforce, it's also for the senior leaders who would also like to have those colleagues to discuss with. And therefore, it's that one community. And again, that together we're stronger, to have that collaboration and that, um, that knowledge here is key. And Lynn, I know that you, you wish yeah. to join me. Yeah, yeah, uh, and I, I was just going to build uh, a bit about what Hala uh, just mentioned because she, she went into, you know, some concrete actions that need to be taken. And maybe also I can check uh, the, some discussions here, like, uh, for instance, Emily is, is asking, a bit <laughs> yes. you know, some concrete things. Uh, Hala mentioned a few 
and and also uh, like some numbers tell us uh, i'm also mentioning the re the same report that i mentioned earlier that in terms of entry level people in the hospitality sector in emea in this region that was surveyed on linkedin uh, in linkedin's report so when it comes to entry level in this hospitality women are quite fairly compared to you know other sectors but where's the, the the story the story is about you know c plus level so and also more sobering uh, data would tell you that for careers that need uh, more than 11 years uh, uh, experience before you cross into a leadership role yeah. in those careers women uh, are not almost not represented or way less represented than men so basically in whatever leadership positions in the hospitality sector, uh, uh, women uh, are, you know, less, way less present. So how how should should companies deal with that? Uh, uh, of course, HR policies are very important, and they need to be very concrete, uh, especially in hospitality sector. In the hospitality sector, when you compare it with other sectors. Um, uh, there has been a couple of you know there have been a couple of recommendations to the sectors to the to this particular sector that they need to be a bit more concrete in terms of what are they expecting uh, uh, in terms of outcome from their diversity and inclusion policy um, uh, how is how are they ranking in terms of priority and who is taking ownership of those policies for instance in some you know banks uh, or other sectors, some leaders take ownership of some goals uh, towards, you know, uh, integrating or having a more diverse uh, workforce. But, it, but it's also about, you know, some concrete HR pro process uh, or and uh, prerequisites, like for instance, making sure to provide to women, uh, you know, the, a good value proposition for their careers. What are your plans when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, parental leave? For example, um, how how do they? Uh, I don't know. Uh, how can they make sure to have a flexible working time, for instance, to uh, be able to work uh, life balance for for the ladies? And also, of course, a lot of work should be done, as, as Hala just mentioned, to fight the, the 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 unconscious bias that we make. Also, Dr. Bashayev touched on that, like. Emotions should not be an accusation, right? But but we but people, even us, uh, have sometimes unconsciously make a, a, a bias against each other. So we should we should be aware of that, and companies should take action to train and to you know increase awareness when it comes to those biases that you know um, do not make uh, women's or men's life uh, uh, easy. So those are maybe like a couple of you know concrete tips that companies should should be using. Yes. And also, I believe, potentially collaborate across companies for such uh, initiatives, because just as with sustainability, this is, this is global. This is not just for one company. And therefore, if leaders can uh, collaborate and understand and learn from each other's best practices, then we all raise the game in the industry to everyone's benefit. Yeah. With uh, Hala, I think you, you want to join in. Was there something that you wish to add? In no, of no, she's uh, she's actually really uh, taken those points and expanded yeah. on them, Lynn. But perhaps when we're talking about companies again, they, you, you know, uh, there are a lot of policies out there, but this uncertainty and unclarity. I know from working friend, uh, female friends that uh, yes, there is a policy, but they're not necessarily sure that if they follow through the policy, they're not going to be frowned upon. So it's just making sure that the young policy is that we're making the, that that more of a a shift in the mindset yes. around the workplace and a shift in the society mindset. And also up to that point, I think you know they. I go back to the fact that I have chosen to stay in my current company, current role I've been for 17 years, but with the same company for a reason as well, is because I felt that they delivered on that promise, and it's going to be very interesting to see how in the future also females will choose companies based on those that actually addresses their needs they make them feel they well understood and they're heard and they have the opportunity i know we're all hoping that one day this whole discussion is going to be behind us but until then there are companies out there that are definitely way ahead and you know it's perfectly fine also for women to choose companies. I mean, we have, you know, the employers chooses the employee, and I think now it's going to become also a matter of that female 
in choosing which company she wants to work for. Yes, because it's important whereby you have the opportunity, then gain the experience, and then you have the exposure. And that's the way you can, you can go through your career. But you need all three to make it happen. So if you don't have the opportunity at the outset, it's quite difficult. Um, but hopefully, to your point, that in a year, two years hence, all the companies will have raised their game and therefore look to each other to see how they can learn and improve. Dr. Bashar, what else can we do in concrete terms? Um, is there any advice, and also Lynn, then across other sectors, what else can we learn from and how else can we move forward? Wow. Very, very uh, big questions. <laughs> um, uh, to be honest, I think what is happening now in the Middle East in particular, and if I would emphasize on Saudi Arabia, it's uh, evolutionally like what's happening, it's, um, it's just um, uh, we need that, that, that kind of shakeups, if you know what I mean. In Kuwait, let's say, um, uh, I'm speaking, we need to amend some laws here and there to, to make women uh, work, uh, work later or work more hours in the night. And these kind of discussions that, that I don't like, we're having like these debates every day. And we're discussing with the World Bank how we can improve them. But I think, uh, generally speaking, firstly, education. Secondly, uh, you, you know, the, the, the education is very, very important just to, to make um, uh, uh, ladies or girls study things that they never studied before. Um, just push them into a different um, uh, area. Uh, try to believe in them. Try to uh, put them in a, in a, in a, in a se uh, senior positions. Uh, t let them take the lead. Um, uh, let them take the media. Let them speak. Um, uh, I think we can we can achieve a lot by doing these little things. You know, it's not only um, you know you, you see a CEO is a man and one of the board is women and uh, this is not the this is the typical and, and, and I'm talking about the Middle East. This is very typical. We need to see more uh, CEO women. We need to empower more women. We need to we need to uh, position women in a different uh, areas, um, uh, such as um, uh, economy, law, politics. Very, very important. Like um, in Kuwait, we have one female MP in the parliament. And we recently, only last month, had the first female judges. And I wrote an article in the Financial Times about that last year, that we need to have uh, female judges. And um, it, it is important. So I, I think we're getting there, but we need to, um, we need to, uh, uh, we need to challenge. I, I, I totally agree with you, Hala, with what you said. But uh, unfortunately, I find this every day that it's a, an everyday challenge and battle to prove um, a point or to prove that you can take the lead or you can take a serious position and you're capable. And if you do, uh, things are um, not the right way always. Um, at the end because you're a human, not because uh, you're a woman, if you know what I mean, or you're emotional and, and, and these kind of classic stereotypes. So um, I think education, uh, speaking more in the media, which is really important, and um, uh, just, uh, just um, uh, I don't know, just, just to take the lead. Yeah. No, thank you for that. I'm, I'm reading some of the comments, and actually to your point, and it, it works very well for you, Lynn, because one, um, one person in the audience is querying, it's difficult to raise funds and investments for, a, uh, for their firm. What can one suggest? And actually, you've got some really good references in, uh, in finance. So if you yeah. wish to explain them. Yeah, like especially in the region, we're seeing a lot of you know, uh, conversations around uh, being there for women who are raising who are planning to raise uh, funds because that's a very difficult conversation to have um so what we are seeing especially here in the middle east um you know the, the conversation i mean the, the conversation is definitely louder um but there's also you know a silver lining when it comes to investment and other things I, I'll, I'll get into investment in a bit but the silver lining about the women empowerment talk is basically to miss out on uh, matching 
uh, you know, uh, talent with, with, with certain positions, right? So if I come here and say, hey, like those three positions are dedicated to women, but then uh, there is uh, no uh, proper candidate uh, to fill those three positions. So here is a bit uh, the tricky part of the old rhetoric uh, that we are, uh, that like, you know, some are, are advocating for, and it can definitely be very, very fruitful and very uh, fair. Uh, so to 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 face that and to solve that, maybe we can think of being definitely more concrete in terms of what is needed to uh, access that promotion, for instance. And, and we see it, uh, especially now with the working from home arrangement, right? And when it comes to measuring productivity, it's been really a mess for most of us, right? Um, so how should we measure productivity and on what uh, benchmark should I be, you know, uh, assessed? Uh, so there should be a conversation happening uh, in that direction for both males and females. But for, for things to be very clear and for you know criteria to be very clear against which we will be uh, measured in our evolution and we will have better chances to take uh, on you know senior roles. Access to finance is uh, obviously one of the uh, biggest hurdles that entrepreneurs in the Middle East region face, but uh, in the GCC we have good numbers uh, when it comes to women taking those uh, funds, but it's obviously very, still very challenging and the challenges are many. First of all, you know, the, uh, the women find it a bit difficult um, to be exposed or to know the, the, the tricks behind the banking sector and what is exactly needed and to the access to investors, right? So the huge networking gap that exists and to, to you know, solve for this networking gap or to, uh, to address this networking gap, um, having uh, communities, be it communities uh, uh, related to women leadership or other communities, those are very helpful to, you know, get uh, the right people connected and of course uh, one of the biggest recommendations that we hear is being on uh, out there being out there now we, right so this is a great opportunity for every woman to showcase who she is professionally to show all her professional hats through the platforms that are out there i would of course advocate for linkedin because it's where i work but it's <laughs> one of the platforms where we can show who we, who we are and what are we offering and have the conversation that matters so we get access to either financing or maybe access to to mentors that would, uh, who will be able to help us out yes no, thank you and there, there are two wonderful queries um in the chat and and i was just about to come to it so it, it works quite well which is twofold one is in this paradigm shift do we see value in diversity and let us highlight that when we're talking about diversity here it, it's it's all all on the levels and groups and especially i think we should bring to the full vein so black ethnic minorities other underrepresented groups what can we do holistically so to the first i would say and i'll just give one example is there is actually a tangible value that we've seen and there have been recent reports in the uk which showcase for the 350 the improvement in noi actually with a more diversified uh, leadership so that is tangible and financial. But I'd love to, to share with you, so Hala, Dr. Nashbar, or Lynn, you wish to expand on those two queries. Lynn, go ahead. I was muted. So, so <laughs> yeah, I would just take, uh, you know, uh, uh, an example that was, uh, or a, couple, a set of you know, recommendations from a PwC report that was recently done, um, and that highlights, you know, when we talk about diversity, and I was mentioning it a bit before, it is, of course, including women, but it's also including different, uh, uh, different uh, parties from uh, from the labor from the workforce. So, and it's the message regarding. Uh, the hospitality industry uh, in specific was a note to making these efforts more concrete and more accessible 
to all parties that are you know targeted uh, women or ethnic groups or other or different groups uh, to make it to make the, the the workforce inclusive and here uh, the report mentions for instance a big improvement when it comes to hospitality companies mentioning their diversity and inclusion efforts in their reports and their code of conduct etc but when it comes to actual uh, you know the, the where it stands in terms of priority when it comes to actual benchmarking this is what is uh, still missing so uh, talking about it and launching initiatives is amazing and uh, conversations like those are really very cool because they're increasing awareness and because they're making us you know look around each other and identify who who else is interested in this topic which is amazing but what it is what is really needed is the actions uh, uh, behind it and also uh, you know making uh, people uh, accountable or making companies accountable for those goals so setting goals is good but what, what else are we doing to make sure that those groups are represented? Um, so women or not, today we're talking about women leadership, but I think uh, as the comments are mentioning, and this yeah. is a point I would definitely agree with, it is a bigger discussion. Um, and, and because every group is special in some way, right? Like no one is here to say that women are more special than, than other groups. So, so that's the key point, I guess. Well, you have that query as well in the, uh, the chat box saying, what is our competitive advantage? <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think, I, I don't know. This is a personal view, right? Uh, of course, women and men function differently, but we should be able to have the exact same chances. And we can talk about how our like female, you know, characteristics uh, are awesome. And also, like on the other side, the, the male characteristics at work are amazing uh, uh, when it comes to you know cognitive, when it comes to certain skills they have because of their bi biology. But at the end of the day, of course, it does matter. But what matters is what you're delivering, the conversation you're driving, the uh, the uh, what, what you're actually achieving on the ground, right? So, so this is a tricky discussion as well. Uh, and yeah, I've always the question piège, as we say. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, I will just add uh, to what uh, Len said because, you know, again, the way I look at it, there's no competitive advantage over. And uh, to the question on uh, diversity, here, you know, I think what we're trying to say is the more diverse and really trying to include everyone is what is going to pretty much impact positively companies. And that's when we look at the bottom line, but also societies in general. And I think, you know, we still have a, a lot to do more on the inclusion and diversity, but we are already now here celebrating how far we have come as women. And then hopefully we will be part of also bringing this change when it comes to diversity and inclusion. Yes, very well said. Very true. Dr. Um, if I could um, just add, um, um, uh, as Lynn said, um, I couldn't agree more. Speaking about it something and actually doing and taking the action is something. I know lots of women who speak about women empowerment every day, every day, and they're the they they bully women when 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 women come to the position of power and they criticize them and they so speaking about it something and actually taking the lead and and, and action is something. And by the way, I have noticed something, uh, just me watching politics and and not only and not necessarily all the time women supporting women. It's mainly men supporting women most of the time. And there is one statistic that I try to find and maybe I could post it in some file later. Yeah. It is actually proven. So it is uh, we need to we need to change. It's not like women with women and men with men. This is this is not correct. Right. We need to convince. We need to convince people. We need to be capable. And yes, we are different. And uh, well, I'm not arguing that we are not different. We could be emotional. Yes. And we, we, we take things and we lead differently. We can lead. And we can get there, if you know what I mean. We don't have to do it at the same exact way uh, that men does things, but we do things, and we 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 are able we are able and capable to do things and take senior positions. And um, speaking about uh, reforms, there there are in the Middle East many many entrepreneurs now like a massive number of women entrepreneurs um are um, just yet boarding if you know what i mean so i think it's 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 really important to to give this a, a boost and i'm i am not uh, with women supporting women because this will not take us anywhere 
Correct. This will not take us anywhere. Everyone should support. Who, if I convince you, you should support me. Either I, if I'm man or woman, but look at me in a neutral eye. Yes. If you know yes. what I mean. That's the yes. silver. We have an bias, and therefore be stronger together and have there be collaboration across all colleagues. And, and right. I, I, I love the last point of, of Dr. Bashir because she's basically saying that, uh, I mean, it shouldn't be like personalized like this, right? And, and the whole discussion about women in leadership and uh, diversity and inclusion should not be an angry uh, uh, discussion. Right. And that's often you know, portrayed as like an angry uh, uh, discussion and it should not be. Uh, I think also, I, I'm so sorry to bring uh, the subject up, but I think the coronavirus, we thought we had a break for <laughs> minutes. You thought you didn't uh, hear the word coronavirus, but I think the coronavirus, uh, uh, you know, the pandemic and, and the massive changes that it has introduced to the, to the way we do work, we do business, yeah. is a good chance for uh, people, companies, uh, employees, and everyone, all the stakeholders to reevaluate, right? Um, their their place at work and also to bring conversation to bring in conversations like these uh, yes, because yes. we do realize that we're working dif completely differently we do realize that the economic outlook is not really uh, on our side when it comes to the next couple of months we are dealing with huge you know levels of or uh, very high levels of uncertainty so here it may be a way or like an occasion for everyone to be, to be to get together not just as dr bashir said women versus men like literally all parts of the all people from the workforce uh, and you know rethink uh, the way the way uh, the way forward uh, when it comes to you know assuming different roles Absolutely. And I think it was Jeremy Rifkin yesterday said it so well, which said, we are all now coming together for a greater good. And so it does absolutely level our playing field and therefore look for improvements. And also it increases the pace of change. We're more agile. So this is the opportunity to bring this to the fore and to move forward positively. Hala, did you wish to say something? No, I'm just agreeing because... Uh... You know, this is very interesting and this this is really a reflection of what we're going to be keeping ourselves and, uh, you know, going forward. I don't like to use, as uh, Lynn said, the word battle. That's why I avoided yeah. it in the beginning, because really? these are not battles. These are opportunities for us to impact tomorrow in a better way. Yes. So with that, I think I'm looking at the time. I thank you all. This has been so positive, inspiring, and I'm sure many in the audience will see all three of you as incredible role models. So thank you for this. We are stronger together. Keep collaborating, keep discussing, keep an open mind. And thank you again, truly. Hala, Dr. Bashar, Lynn. Thank you so much. Shukran. Thank Bye -bye. you. Shukran. Shukran. Shukran.